Hello everyone, welcome to round three of the Elite Karting series coming to you from Daytona Milton Keynes. There we are having a little look at the track on Google Earth. Now after an extremely satisfactory round two down at Sandown Park, we have gone all the way from eighth in the championship after a disastrous round one up to second. Can we improve on that today? Well, stick around to find out. Okay, so welcome to the rolling up uh, formation lap. Uh, you can see that we're starting this race at P2. So we've got James Brown on our left. Uh, now James is a very, very quick guy around um, Milton Keynes. He's actually the N35 ST champion around here, reigning champion, and he's currently leading the D-Max championship. Uh, behind us, we've got Matt Bolton, who uh, you will remember from the previous round. Uh, had some massive, like really, really awesome battles with him. Um, and um, this is actually race number two of the day. So I'll take you through what happened in race number one just after uh, the start when this race settles down. So uh, we're rolling up now, waiting for the green flag and the green flag goes and we get a flying start, a really great start. Uh, unfortunately, you've got two left-handers coming up here. James is still on our left, there he is. Um, and we just get boxed in a little bit there and that is Matt Bolton. Uh, we're thinking about a little move up the inside, just a little bit, little of a, little bit of a bump from the, from behind. Thinking about a move up the inside, but Matt covers it off, and we're actually from a really good launch. We're down a place now. Can we get back at Matt uh, up the inside? It's going to be difficult. Not much of a braking zone there, really. Uh, so we have to back out. Matt goes a little bit wide again. Um, we can just try and ruin his entry by not letting him use all of the track, but unfortunately now. That does look like Matt has cemented P2 and uh, we're going to have to settle for now at least for P3. Um, so um, yeah, line astern, this is, a, um, this is a, a tricky track to overtake on. Uh, easy for you to say. Tricky track to, <laughs> to overtake on um, and, uh, and you'll see why in a minute. This is actually one of uh, the longest uh, karting tracks in the UK. Uh, however, um, the braking zones, although there are some pretty significant braking zones like the one you've just seen, um, if it is a significant break, as we're just going to go up the inside of Matt here and oh, we just have to blend out the throttle. We go on the curb, um, but there's really very little runoff. Um, again, have to back out of the move there. Um, this is what I mean, you know, like a lot of the corners um, around um, this track are, are relatively sort of medium speed. So it, it's pretty difficult to do someone on the brakes, really. Um, you're, you're better off trying to get them on the exit, but of course you've got to make sure that there's no one behind you um, before you uh, before you sort of um, try to do that. So yeah, um, really, really difficult. This is going to be kind of a story of the race, but let me, just as this race has now settled down, let me take you through what happened um, at the start of the day. So um, at the Elite Karting Series, you go out for a 10 minute practice qualifying session um, and your final lap of that practice qualifying session is your qualifying lap, it's your, it's your hot lap. So you've got a bit of time to go out and, um, uh, and familiarise yourself with the cart, familiarise yourself with the track if you don't know um, the place uh, that you've been to. Uh, and I'll talk more about my, my time at Milton Keynes uh, in, uh, in a few moments' time. Um, and, uh, and then your, your final lap of that session is your hot lap. So really important that you get yourself a nice little gap that you're not going to be you know, sort of right on someone's bumper who's slower than you. Make sure that you look behind, make sure you're not compromising anyone else. That's not going to help you or them. Um, so. Um, yeah, essentially, um, we started off today um, relatively slow, actually. Um, now, this is compared to James Brown, the guy, the driver in red, who, like I say, really knows his way around this track very, very well. I actually do know my way around here uh, reasonably well as well. In 2020, I did a whole championship up here, so I've really got no excuse um, not to know the track. Um, it was when I was a lightweight, actually. I was a little bit, I was probably one of the heaviest lightweights. Um, I was weighing in at about 82 kilograms. Um, at, at the time, uh, and actually 85 kilograms was the heavyweight. <laughs> so um, uh, the heavyweight uh, uh, sort of a threshold. So I really perhaps should have gone and, and, and battled in heavyweights. But at the time I thought, you know, um, it's, a, it's a good incentive to keep the weight off. 
Um, anyway, um, I, I finished third in that championship behind Matt Plum, who won, and Ollie Hood, who came in second. Um, as we're just um, approaching the, the rear bumper of Matt again here, we're right on his bumper. Oh, just go a little bit wide. Um, and again, unfortunately, really only one line through the, uh, the, the turn two, three chicane there. Um, we go for a wider line for a better exit, trying to straighten the cart up as much as possible. But yeah, again, not. Um, not able to do anything here. We've got a slightly tighter line on the exit. Um, and again, just having a little look up the inside. Can we do it? Oh yeah, we just have to make sure that we don't drift wide and then knock Matt into the barrier. Because uh, if we do, we'll be receiving a penalty um, and, uh, and, and, and ruining both of our races. So difficult to get past it. Anyway, as I was saying, if I'm telling a boring story and it all kicks off and I'll interrupt the boring story. Um, anyway, yeah, so, so I do know this place. Uh, you know, there's no excuses for me not knowing it, but that was in 2020. Um, and, um, and I really haven't been up here since, apart from one occasion uh, in January, actually, which was a very sort of like, well, it was a mainly wet track with a few dry patches. So, um, you know, not, not really been here um, and, and don't have kind of a local knowledge at the time. Now, um, Martin Brundle, he, he always says that uh, racetracks are a living, breathing thing, aren't they? And, and the grip levels change. They change from session to session in Formula One. They grip up throughout the weekend, don't they? Um, and um, when I first came out um, into practice qualifying and qualifying, and actually part of, um, heat of, of race one, I was definitely overdriving. There was much less grip than I remember around here, actually. Some corners like this one that I remember used to be flat, uh, were not flat today at least. Um, you know, so um, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely had to sort of you know re relearn the track uh, a little bit in terms of breaking points, uh, the lines you can take, uh, some of the decision making. Uh, so um, you know, um, yeah, not not trying to make excuses or anything like that. As I get it wrong there and shake my head in frustration at myself. Um, you see, Matt, uh, Matt's pulled out a little bit of a gap now. Um, so we'll see if we can try and get him back. Uh, we were quite good on the brakes just down here. Um, but essentially, um, yeah, not good news in qualifying. I was seven tenths off James Brown, uh, who put it on pole, and uh, and, a, and a few more tenths, or a couple of about uh, I can't remember if it was about three or four tenths off Matt, who actually qualified second. Matt Bolton, who's ahead of us, um, ahead of us now. So um, yeah, a, a pretty poor qualifying lap from me. Definitely overdriving. Definitely too much slide. Um, and that's James Brown up ahead. I don't know if you can see, but he's, he's actually caught the back of one of the lightweights. Um, but however, by the end of the day, um, I was able to learn, actually, in, in heat one, um, I started third, um, got a really good start, actually, and got ahead of Matt Bolton. So Matt Bolton has returned the favour and he's got ahead of me. Um, now, um, I got past him. Oh, it's the, uh, back, one of the back, uh, back markers in the lightweight just goes in backwards there. So Matt and myself don't have to overtake him. That's, uh, that's quite fortuitous for us. Uh, it means we, we, can, um, we can keep, keep just about on touch with, uh, um, with James up ahead. So um, yeah, got ahead of Matt Bolton, spent most of the race defending from him. Um, but about uh, two thirds of the way through the race, Matt got past me. I overcooked it. Matt got past me on the exit. Um, and I was then able to sit behind Matt and have a really good close look at what he was doing. Um, and it was very, very clear that I was just overdriving slightly. And um, having looked at Matt's lines and Matt's breaking points and everything, um, I, it, I, my driving mu yeah, massively improved. And actually, the reason I was starting this race on P2 was because I ended up getting a, a very slightly faster lap time than Matt Bolton ahead of us. Um, and um, it, it's a bit of a story of the season so far, actually. You know, in terms of pace, um, Matt at the moment is my main championship rival. James Brown, who's leading this race by several cart lengths now, um, he didn't, uh, he wasn't there for uh, for, for um, Sandown Park, so he didn't contest round two at Sandown Park. Had he have contested round two, he'd be right up there as well. He's obviously very quick. But for now, at least, Matt is my main championship rival, um, and he's ahead of me. And the reason he's ahead of me is that even though on pace we're very, very similar, and in actual fact, um, uh, on, on several, several of the, um, several of the races, um, I've actually been sort of slightly quicker. Yeah, we're really only talking um, a few one hundredths of a second normally. 
um, we've been um, in dry conditions at least normally we've been as we're putting a bit of pressure on him again now um, we've been within a tenth of each other but Matt is definitely um, doing a much better job in terms of his race craft now Matt is going to going to put some moves he's he has put a move on me already um i've put a move on him but matt is definitely doing a better job so far in this championship the elite karting series he's definitely doing a better job with regard to his racecraft so um yeah something to uh, for, for me to work on there a little bit um you know pace at tamworth was appalling and racecraft at, well actually i didn't really get to do much racecraft at tamworth because um uh, I was last. <laughs> I wasn't quite last actually, but I, I wasn't. Um, I wasn't really in a position to, to overtake anyone. Um, Matt's just gone in a little bit hot there. We're in his slipstream now. He knows it. He's going to defend. Can we get around the outside? No, we, we can't. The thing is about this corner is if you go offline, actually a little bit where Matt is now, you get there's really very little grip. Uh, the track is very green offline, and actually we've been able to. Um, uh, to, to sort of take advantage of that a little bit, but Matt knows where we're going to be, knows where to defend, he knows that we're not going to be able to get around turn one ahead of him, and he's just placing his cart very, very intelligently um, and stopping us from being able to, to do anything. This battling is really allowing James Brown up front to get ahead as we're again going for a look up the inside of Matt and uh, just have to stand on the brake pedal, and I'm shouting at my helmet now because I know that was probably my last chance. We're in the dying moments of this um, heat now um, and um, rather than um, rather than being sensible about it I've just tried to show my nose. Um, Matt's not been making any mistakes I've been trying to encourage him into a mistake and now my driving is getting a little bit weary. Uh, not weary. Uh, yeah. What do I mean? Uh, a little bit uh, wayward that's probably the better term. Um, rear sliding everywhere. There I am, I'm throwing my hand up in frustration, not with anyone else, purely with myself, because I knew that um, you know, had I just been a little bit more intelligent about it, I definitely at least would have been able to be much closer to Matt at the end. Matt and I um, really, um, really allowed James to disappear off into, uh, into what is, was quite a simple victory for him. Um, and um, yeah, so, so this is the feature race now. Very sadly, sorry I didn't say this, very sadly I lost the footage for, for race one. Anyway, we're off. James Brown um, pole, Matt Bolton second, myself third. We've got Matt Putland um, on our right hand side. He's getting a very good uh, start there and he's putting the pressure on me. And um, you might be able to see just instantly, yeah, it's a little snap of oversteer there. Um, Matt and James, straight away, much, much, um, much, much better start, much quicker start. They're getting, um, they're, they're gapping me by several cartlets. And you, you, if you think back to the last race, and actually the race that I couldn't show you, Heat 1, um, you know, the, the, this gap, well, there, there wasn't a gap this big, uh, you know, sort of over the course of the entire heat. Um, but I've made a very, very sort of slow start here. Um, and um, we, we've got, like I say, Matt Putnam and Dane Christensen as well, right behind me. Dane is third in the championship as well. So he's no slouch. And um, yeah, really at the moment, whilst I'm frustrated, I can't be fighting the two in the front. Um, I'm more concerned about um, particularly the couple of drivers who are right on my tail behind. Um, now, why did I have such a, a poor start? Well, essentially, the reason um, was, I think, uh, low tyre pressures in this cart, because um, whilst this cart was very cool, that's the wrong line, by the way, <laughs> a bit of a lack of grip around the uh, final corner. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, um, the tyre pressures in this cart seem to be um, fairly low. It seemed to be a very cold cart initially. Uh, it had been used all day, so I've no idea why, um, yeah, why, why it would have been cold. But, yeah, well, all the tyre pressures, I think, yeah, general uh, lack of grip initially in the opening laps. Uh, however, this car does come good. Don't switch over and watch Super GT because uh, the, the, this car does warm up. And um, although we had uh, a, a first lap to forget, we are actually going to start reeling these guys in uh, because once the car does warm up, it actually does have some good pace in it. So, um, yeah. Um, We've had, um, yeah, let me take you through round, uh, so heat, heat one. Um, so yeah, heat one was a third place, heat two was a second place, which means we start heat three in P3. I've basically been finishing third um, all day. Um, in terms of pace, uh, it's definitely going in the right direction. I was seven tenths off James Brown in qualifying. By the end of the day, um, in this race here, I was able to get to within two one hundredths of a second 
of James Brown. He was still faster. <laughs> I have to, uh, I have to say that. Um, annoyingly for me, he was still faster. But I, had, as near as makes no difference, matched his time. So um, you know, I, I'm quite pleased with that. I'm pleased that I've um, still got the capacity for learning, shall we say, as I, uh, as I enter middle agehood, uh, <laughs> still able to. Um, uh, it's able to uh, to learn um, a thing or two about how to drive uh, a track which whilst I'm familiar with um, was throwing up a few curveballs for me at the start of the day and actually as you can see um, I, I wasn't the only one to, to improve my pace Matt Bolton up ahead of us here he's looking um, very very racy as well uh, and actually for the first time today um, James is having to uh, look over his shoulder and do a little bit of defending now um, heat one was pretty much the same as the the, the, the second heat, the, the first heat from this video. Um, James uh, was able to take advantage of myself and Matt battling, uh, and he was able to enjoy uh, a lead of several seconds over us. Um, we, we never really challenged James for the victory, um, and, and it was all very uh, kind of, um, it was all very straightforward for him. Um, in this, feature race however which is slightly longer um, for the first time today we are uh, Matt and myself are gonna give James um, uh, an actual battle which is uh, <laughs> better late than never you know I suppose and uh, and actually certainly at the moment I am not part of this battle am I we, we, we're still um, uh, we're still um, you know kind of like working off the deficit from our very poor first lap and a half two laps um, however, what I would say is that the, uh, oh, there's someone in the back, uh, someone going in backwards, sorry, I should say, into the cliff drop uh, chicane there. Uh, what I would say is that the, uh, the deficit that you saw uh, the two boys ahead, um, uh, you yeah, know, kind of uh, uh, stretch out on me in lap one, that hasn't really increased. Um, you know, I've stabilised that gap now and um, Matt Putland behind, Dane Christensen behind, they were right on my tail um, and, um, and I was really worried about them initially. However, um, I have been able to you know, sort of up my pace a little bit, tyre pressure's um, good, engine warm and uh, as a result of that I'm doing front running pace now. Uh, again, better late than never and, um, and these two boys ahead, Matt and James, or James and Matt, I should say, at this this, uh, this stage, James is ahead of Matt. Um, you know, they are they're, they're not moving any further ahead, and if they start battling, um, then I am gonna gonna be given an opportunity to join the fight. At the moment, I'm not quicker than them, um, but I'm not dramatically slower either. And actually, as you see there, Matt, for the first time, starts showing his nose to James as we just get a little bit hot into uh, the cliff top chicane there, and. Um, uh, there we have it. Right, so um, James and Matt, for the, now for the first time, are starting uh, to, to fight. Now um, we just go a little bit wide around here, get a little bit overexcited, get the tail out. So that's a little bit of a missed opportunity for me there, really. Um, really should, uh, should have been better, should have been a bit calmer about it, but I'm so excited by the prospect of joining this fight. I'm, I'm kind of in no man's land a little bit at the moment. Um, you know, not, not challenging these guys ahead. I've built um, a little bit of a buffer behind now. I'm not being immediately challenged. So, uh, so that's, pretty good. that's pretty good news as well. But James just a little bit wide there. Matt is really putting him under quite a lot of pressure. James wide again. And now Matt Bolton up the inside championship leader is going to do me no favors at all and um, and take the take the first place but James isn't going to accept that James isn't happy about that James wants his first place back uh, James has been in first place all day and he's not about to uh, to give it up just like that to the young uh, Matt Bolton so um, yeah there we have it James needs to be really really um, calm and clean around this corner and he is actually and there is Matt trying to break the toe this is a very long straight 55 56 miles an hour uh, James goes up the inside and uh, Matt has to live on the really really um, kind of uh, a, a less grippy part of a the track there but he does very very well Matt Bolton is very very good um, and, and calm on the pedals and uh, so particularly on the brake pedal, you know, you don't see him locking the rears and um, going for a spin into the barriers uh, at all, really. I don't think I've ever seen him do that. So, uh, yeah, he does very well there. But that little, um, that lap there where those two had the fight, that's really allowed me to join the party. 
So, um, you know, feeling much, much better about the way this race is going now. And um, in a moment, I think when we the last time James looked around, I probably wasn't anywhere near him um, or Matt, but I'm about to demonstrate uh, to him in a rather rude way that I am there. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to overtake him, I'm just going to bump him up the arse. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, don't get, don't get overexcited. So at this point here, yeah, it's just about, you can see that the rear is just dancing a little bit. Um, and just there, you see the, um, the rear just broke away ever so slightly and not ideal, but the same thing happened to James up ahead actually. Um, and we are in his slipstream now, so we are able um, to, to live with our small mistake. Oh, I'm just going to give James a little bump there. Um, bit of an accident, um, just went in a little bit hot on the brakes, so um, I'm not going to try and, um, and, and force him onto the less preferable part of a track as a result of that. We're going to let him go through, just blend off the throttle. Um, you know, we, we don't really do that kind of gamesmanship. I mean, for what, what some drivers might have done there, it's given them a little bump, uh, waved, oh sorry, sorry about that, um, and then stuck their nose up so James couldn't have taken the proper racing line into the next left-hander. Um, you know, that, that, that's quite common, um, but, uh, but it's not, not something that we're going to do. Um, but anyway, um, at least James does now know that we are there and, um, and we are, again, for the first time today, giving him a race. So yeah, better late than never, eh? Um, but um, I have to say, um, this was a really, really tight and intense battle and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and we've got three guys here, you know, all exactly the same weight, we, you know, weighing up to 90 kilograms. Actually, we're just slightly above 90 kilograms, 90. One night I was weighing in at 92 actually just because um, the way the weights worked and if you don't you know, the, the, if we if we weren't carrying those kind of weights then there's a good chance that, that we might have just come in just under um, so uh, not really worth uh, uh, you know, getting it wrong really but yeah you know, we were all lapping um, within a tenth of each other um, you know you've got James in the red here who is a, a reigning champion around this place current championship leader as well so I'm satisfied now now, um, that my driving has improved and it is as as good as can reasonably be expected uh, to be I'm sure that you know I didn't put in the perfect lap at all um, at, uh, at any any one point I'm sure there's definitely uh, you know if, if you gave, um, gave this car to someone really really good um, then they would as we just have a look up the inside I'm sure they would go probably two three maybe four times faster but I'm definitely pleased that uh, we were able to have a really really excellent battle uh, and again just as I'm um, putting James under some pressure and sticking my nose where it's not wanted um, Matt has been able to get away so this was really the story of the day it was me in third place making a nuisance of myself to whoever was in second place and letting the leader get away. Um, so, uh, you know, kind of sucks for second place. Not, not really ideal for, for me either. But, uh, like I said, on a, on, a, on a track like this, which is so difficult to overtake on, really all you can do is make as big a nuisance of yourself as possible, not make any mistakes and put the other guy under as much pressure as possible. Um, I should also add as well, a little um, wave, little shout out to our lightweight drivers because um, they are actually on the same track as us, as us um, at the moment. Uh, as again, I go for a slightly tighter line on James. If you go for the wider line, you do tend to get the better exit. And you can see that, um, that there, uh, James has achieved that. Uh, James just got away from us on the infield straight. Um, but anyway, yeah, sorry. Um, you, you might see, I've, we've seen a, a couple of lightweights in the barriers, haven't we? Um, and um, uh, we, we were actually at the front of the heavyweight pack. We were catching the back of the lightweight battle. Uh, it's a little bit like um, uh, you know, kind of some of the, the Le Mans um, races in that uh, we had two separate grids and, and the lightweights went um, ahead of us. And then, as the uh, the heavyweight field, we um, we we sort of stayed back. Um, and but there, just on our left hand side, we are. You can see there, we are beginning to catch uh, the back of the lightweight train. Um, so I, at this uh, this kind of time, at this moment, I'm sort of thinking. Um, and then actually, we in, in heat one and two, we did also um, almost catch the back of the lightweight train as well. And, and I was thinking at the time, you know, this might be an opportunity um, for, for me at the back of this this train of three. Um, if the the poor old leader is normally the person um, who gets caught with, um, um, with with the back marker, trying to get through them first, it doesn't always work like this. But normally, it's uh, it's the first driver to come across the back marker who is. 
who suffers the biggest time loss in getting by. Um, you know, quite often, if you're if you're right on someone's rear bumper and they go to overtake someone, you can sneak through as well with minimal time loss. Um, so, um, as this race is longer, this is a 15 minute. Um, I think it's 15 minutes. Anyway, I should probably know this. I was the one driving. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think this uh, this race is slightly longer. Uh, well, it's certainly longer than the, than the heats. You have uh, heat one. Heat two and um, and the feature race and of course a practice qualifying session as well, um, but yeah because this uh, this race is longer I am thinking actually you know, there's a reasonable chance that we are going to catch these lightweight drivers um, and uh, and 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 that might throw a bit of a spanner in the works again as you can see we've been following Matt and we've been following James around and yeah you know, there's we just don't have a big enough time delta we don't have a big enough difference in in pace. Um, to get past these guys unless they make a mistake. You know, these guys are driving inch perfectly around this track. Uh, it's making it very, very difficult um, for us to, uh, uh, to, to put the move in. And um, when you are you're kind of really maximizing your package as these guys ahead of us are doing, really the only opportunity um, you've got is, uh, is if one of them makes a mistake and, and unfortunately for us at the moment they're not. Of course the other opportunity is, uh, is back markers um, uh, or if you're, if you're feeling very very brave a lunge but like I said just around here there's just not that many places to make the lunge. Uh, this would be a good good place but again you know when, when the driver in front of you is maximizing uh, the braking potential of the cart then you know I'm afraid that uh, that opportunity is, is taken away from you. You cannot lunge someone who is already maximising the braking potential, particularly on the inside of that hairpin that has very very little grip compared to the racing line. You know we could try it, I suppose, but I know from experience if we do, we're going straight into the tyre barrier. So um, yeah, it's it, it, it's a little bit tricky that one. I would also say um, I, I don't know if anyone else has been to uh, been to. To, to Milton Keynes and, and, uh, and sort of has the same opinion but um, this is going to sound really weird but a lot of the, the kind of the entry to the corners is almost sort of slightly thinner uh, or, or you know, uh, less less wide than the exit um, and, and stay with me on this one because I'm about to make a, a, a what I think is a sensible point um, if you know um, Cota um, Circuit of the Americas the Formula One track the way they designed it was to put uh, or to create some very wide um, corner entries and, and the reason they did that was to give the drivers an opportunity to take different lines in and create um, some um, some overtaking opportunities we've got a lightweight driver who's been spun around there um, so uh, you know again it's all you know kind of potentially kicking off in front of us this is the last lap so if I'm gonna make a move well I'm not really close enough to make a move um, but I just need to keep putting the pressure on um, on James who's gonna keep pressurizing Matt as well um, anyway um, the, yeah the um, Circuit of the Americas, very, very wide corner entries, which is, uh, makes it uh, you know, much, much easier to overtake. Um, and, um, and, and I'd say that this place is almost the opposite. The, the exits are sort of wider than, um, uh, than the entry points. Now, it might just be me. I might be being completely ridiculous. I mean, the, the track is obviously this, a really similar width all the way around, but, um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd say if, um, yeah, you just just there, just through that section, it seemed that there was a little bit um, kind of more uh, more exit uh, room than the, than there was entry room. So uh, yeah, it makes it pretty difficult uh, to string an, an overtaking um, opportunity together. Anyway, um, we're, we're we're kind of really into the last overtaking point, fighting the rear there a little bit. This car was a little bit rear limited, but I quite like the um, uh, the. The rotation on it um, that that was good I did do my fastest lap time Matt Bolton crosses the line for the win um, but it's actually going to be an overall win for James Brown who finished first twice second once Matt finished second twice um, and one and first once and I finished third three times so third place overall in that heat thanks ever so much for watching please do join me for the next one uh, and I'll see you then